beading, the technique of using complex stitches and tiny seed beads to create jewelry, often in complex designs, became popular a couple of decades ago. Since then, a number of artists have produced stunning, jaw-dropping work and pushed the limits of the medium, producing beaded sculpture, book covers, quilts, and other work. The achievements have been recognized by other artists, craft museums, galleries, and publishers, including Lark Publishing, a leader in providing exposure for craft artists. Despite the undeniable quality and beauty of the work, many beaters, including prominent artists, are unable to make a living selling their work. They supplement their income by teaching, running bead stores, and by other means. This is true for many artists, and I don't for a minute suggest it is peculiar only to beaters. I do suspect, however, that the issue is more acute for them. Why? There is always a tension between the price of a work of art, especially for emerging artists, and its perceived value. An artist will judge his or her work by the excellence of its design and the skills necessary to produce it. A client looks at the price of the work, its durability, and what can be called its inherent value. Let me explain. Beaded work is primarily created from tiny, inexpensive seed beads, mostly glass, base metal, and crystals. The thread used in the marvelously intricate stitching typically is some form of nylon, and despite the best efforts of manufacturers, over time, nylon stretches and can break. This is an issue for wearable art, especially. Jewelry artists typically build in some kind of pricing to recoup labor costs in their work, but a complex piece of beaded work can take months. So while affluent clients who get beaded work may be willing to pay design and labor labor-based prices, less affluent clients and those new to the medium shy away. The tension between price and perceived value is too great. This hurts beaters. So how to resolve it? As with any piece of art, it sells better if the artist takes care to explain the materials and the techniques used to create it and explains the care it will need for maximum longevity. But for beaters, I think this isn't enough. I'd suggest that beaters begin to incorporate gemstones into their work and learn how to manipulate wire in their patterns. This answers the value and longevity equation clients make when evaluating work. Beaters should go to gem and jewelry shows, learn the properties of various gemstones, and price the small diameter beads. They are often more affordable than many suspect. Please understand me. I'm a former gallery owner, gemologist, goldsmith, and professional pearl and bead stringer. I love beaded work and believe it's underexposed and underappreciated. I would also like to see more beaters making a living with their work rather than having their energies drained by constant teaching and retail activities. I make the suggestion in this spirit.